Hey guys, how you all doing? So I've just eating some dinner and uh, kind of just been doing a little bit of thinking about BNB. I, I realized that my news feed is full of like nasty bearish stuff. Um, one of the videos was named uh, the SEC signs a death warrant for the crypto industry. And the content is very motive, very negative, and uh, a lot of fear mongering. So, you know, I, I've just been thinking a little bit that, you know, potentially there is extra value in uh, BNB shorts. Maybe, maybe this kind of setup or situation we've been I've been watching on the weekly is even more interesting than first thought in the sense that. Generally speaking, before the main phase of the bull run, there is some kind of a flush in the market. I've mentioned this a couple of times in other videos. Um, but if you believe that the market is cyclical, then we should expect some kind of attempt to crash things. But now, if we are going to do the usual, um, the like attack vectors that are pretty common right now, or I'd say back in the past with Tether and uh, Bitfinex. Uh, if you've been through the Tether and Bitfinex days, then possibly you'll already be noticing or uh, you know seeing the comparison between or the coincidence, <laughs> I should say, that you know more and more increasingly Binance are being pulled into the picture, and Binance seem to in some ways now be the new Tether. Like, are they solvent? Are they not? Are they criminal? Are they not? Um, and so there is the chance here that shorts on BNB in the long uh, sort of medium term, let's say over the coming weeks or into a, a month or two, we may see that market flush occur. And if it is going to occur, there's a good chance that Binance are somehow going to be used as the one of the characters in the game to really shake the market. Now, we have to hope, of course, that it's not as bad as them, uh, you know, disappearing entirely that would be probably the end of the game for uh i don't think there would be a bull run after that finance are necessary for the bull run um i think that's that's clear but let's assume that they are used as a character in the game then most likely we're going to see more of cz being personally accused of wrongdoing as well as Binance as an entity um going face to face with the sec in america and whether they're going to be shunned by other jurisdictions for their naughty, potentially naughty behavior, who knows? But again, ultimately, if you can hold some shorts on BNB, if we are going into that negative cycle now, then most likely there will be a day where you know, PSTZ is accused of being a pedophile or a warlord or a human trafficker or you know all the crazy stuff that starts happening. If that all comes out, or you know the SEC managed to kind of really attack finance and make a good drama out of it there's probably going to be some red dildo day at some point and you know for all we know we, you know you could just never know you never know how far things can go either up or down in crypto because the markets can be heavily manipulated so i guess all i'm trying to say is if you can get a, a decent entry on bnb in the coming sort of days whether you you know you added some today after our chats or whether we look for further entries once we've broken under this kind of major support levels, uh, it doesn't really matter. We're, we're talking about a weekly game here. So we may see this, we may get an, another final opportunity. We, we may not, it doesn't matter. Maybe just try and look at a trade or looking at building some trades where our stop loss is above these areas, at least for now. Um, I guess we can just talk about it as, as we go along. I don't think as, a rush. I don't think this happens overnight at all. I just think that there is, as I say, additional value in shorts with BNB just because of the fact that they are the new tether. They will be used to shake people out. And Binance themselves, usually, you know, they want to cycle their coins. So they're a big casino. They've got tons of people out in the world holding their casino chips in the form of BNB. And if they can crash the market or be a part of that market crash, that's great for them because not only do they know it's coming and can they trade against everyone on that, but they get to buy everything up super cheap, right? So then when the bull run does begin again, they've got all of their ammunition, they've got all of their poker chips, 
and they got them at a discount rate. <laughs> so it is, it is inevitable that if we do not break out over these highs and if we do not see ETH and BTC breaking out of those range areas that we've discussed, 2030 level for ETH, 28,800 for BTC, if we can't sustain trading over there, then to me, it, assuming we are doing yeah, the usual cycle, there's probably some sort of a flush in here um, before the main phase of the bull run. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say, really. Um, you know, the underlying assumption being made here is that big money may have flipped the switch. Um, so I tend to look at the news from the perspective of how am I being influenced rather than sort of reading the news as it were. And I just noticed the switch over the last week or two. We went from very, very bullish algorithms being fed to me or the algos feeding me very bullish news, let's say. And now it seems like the scary mode has been turned on and there's just a much higher percentage of bearish um, sentiment uh, kind of influence out there. And you've got to remember with the, f the fact that AI is a thing um, and we don't even know who is a real person anymore online, at least. It's very easy for people with, you know, billions of dollars, let's say, to just flip the switch. And for them, it's like doing advertising, but it's just to the entire world and it's all automated and it's all tracked. And uh, once you start seeing that kind of collusion where the news starts to feel very coordinated, that's where you kind of have to just accept that most people don't read the news that way. They are going to be influenced by it. They are just going to consume things. And um, it's kind of like slowly steering the Titanic towards an iceberg. And you can, you can bet that if we're going to see this market flush, we will bump into a random iceberg that didn't need to be there or could have been avoided. You know, there's always some kind of crazy little event that kicks off um, to give us the reason that all the bots around the world or all the big money around the world just happen to sell at the same time. <laughs> so that we all like, oh, that's why it happened. Next time I'll know it's coming. So none of us complain, right? Um, or the masses don't get it. So anyway, that's all I'm sure, assuming or kind of speculating on is that out of anything to short, I know BNB can be a little bit slow, but um, yeah, you might get that funny random jackpot payday where your short, um, you know, just ends up going, you know, coming all the way down here or something really silly. Is that possible? I don't know. But if the if the news is crazy enough and there's enough money behind the people making this news, then Almost anything can happen, you know. Nobody complains about the crazy run up from fifty dollars to six hundred, seven hundred dollars. Um, don't rule out a run from seven hundred dollars down to fifty dollars. Who knows? All right. So look, I'm not saying we're we're dead yet. Um, we could break out of this area on the weekly. This doesn't have to be a diagonal. I could be wrong about this being an ABC, but my word does it not look like a textbook, eight, three waves, three waves, then a diagonal. Hmm. Hard to ignore. Um, so ultimately, yeah, invalidation of this idea is trading uh, above this high. Um, these are our previous notes. So I don't really need to go over those for you guys. But ultimately, yeah, we're in theory here, we've already kind of broken down out of our um, diagonal. This is kind of the retest. If we break back under this uh, support level, um, this box is kind of a major daily, weekly bull bear pivot in terms of history. This has been the end, the gatekeeper to moves up and down since when? I mean, since this is 2021. Okay. So. If we trade back over here, then something ends up. If we wick into here and take liquidity and SFP this area at any stage, it's a massive, massive short opportunity. I'm 100% sure of that. So let's see what the market makers give us. We've already had these opportunities to get short. I know some of you are already in on this short and um, we're looking at adding, let's say, or building once we break beneath or break below these breakout levels and previous pivot zones. Um, if you can be patient, then you're, you're basically then just looking to build on your position over 
any punts that do come in. Um, because, of course, things typically at the moment seem to want to move in threes. So even if we do take a dive to sweep the slow, there's a good chance that we'll have three waves back up unless those three waves form a running flat. Um, that running flat will require some pretty bad news because, you know, typically we're ping pong at the moment because market makers want to distribute. They want to build up their positions as well. So it's in their interest to keep price up at this level which is exactly why you see this kind of ping pong. You know, we, this, this large dump, it just was erased, but ultimately on the weekly we're, let's go back to the weekly. So yeah, on the weekly, we've really got this divergence going on, on, on volume. You know, the bears are building up, they're selling uh, much more, let's say with more momentum than uh, than is being bought up so you'd assume that something is wrong here all right and rsi is going to take more time to develop um you can't say what this means at the moment because it's neutral um, but you can see that potential diagonal there potential it could still be one more high in here because you know we didn't get to over overbought yet. Um, there's an argument for a bearish divergence here, but it's hard to say because of these wicks. I mean, it's taken on the close, so maybe you'd argue that's bearish divergence and uh, couple that with your bearish divergence on OBV and you'd, you'd say, yeah, that's uh, job done. All right. Well, that's all I wanted to share. Just some thoughts whilst I was eating my dinner. I um, thought I'd just go through that whilst it's in my mind. And as I say, uh, it doesn't mean we won't get pumped um, across all sorts of different coins. Those are actually some of these downward um, periods, are actually some of the best. And this is no bullshit because the developers and the guys behind a lot of these other coins, they got to do an exit pump. So there's a lot, there's a lot of scam pumps. There's a lot of short squeezes. And uh, the algo is pretty good, at, as you know, picking up those funky little explosions and trends. So um, I, 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 uh, I'm not worried about becoming too bored, as it were. And as we, excuse me, as we know, we can also have some fun with these short positions and speculate a little bit on what's happening with the news and what, what is the iceberg that they're building up for us. Um, so never a dull moment. And at least at least with this we're making some money i'm uh, heavily on uh, short on eth at the moment so um i'm going to be joining this bnb party a little bit after that um once we've gotten that breakdown basically because uh yeah i'm already happily happy with the exposure i've got over on eth overall so um but i'll pay close attention to this if it looks like it's developing the way i think all right guys i'm gonna stop it there and uh, catch you next time see you